deals big knockouts that Tord wasn't expecting. We see players bring down their prizes already as Tord uh, shows that he gets a Zorua and a, uh, a Mew EX onto his prizes, but nothing too crazy. Now, oh, I'm sorry, that was uh, that was actually Jimmy, and it's Tord here that's showing uh, even better prizes himself. Yeah, pricing weakness policy, it's uh, not going to come into play here, so not too big a deal. All right, looks like we start things off with Tord Reckliff starting things off here. Yeah, he starts his favorite Pokemon, Tapu Lele. He likes to play four in almost every deck that he has ever played. Uh, I think he's only going with three this time, but he's got that Ultra Ball to start him off, and I think he's going to go find another. All right, Tord playing an Ultra Ball here to start things off. Likely finding another Tapu Lele here, and uh, Tapu Lele wonder tagging in a Bridget would not be a very surprising play. Yep, Tord's just going to make sure that he gets all his counts on this opening search that he has here. Wants to make sure nothing too crazy is prized. Get those Zeruas into play so that you can start getting those trades going. Tord's still looking through his deck. Of course, on the first turn of the game, you do want to kind of get a better idea of what your prizes look like. I think after looking through his, uh, through his deck a few times, he's going to be very comfortable with what's left in his deck. For sure, Tapu Lele comes down. Bridget, three Zerua. He has Zorark and Evo Soda in his hand as well, so already going to be able to put down those Zoraks into play as soon as turn two. Yeah, not a difficult decision here for Tord. Once he does find that Bridget, immediately finds uh, the triple Zorua to uh, come with him. Now, that's already a powerful turn. Is he looking to do anything additionally here? Uh, he has no energy to play, but I don't think we'd even see an energy come down if he had it. Uh, it's something that you want to hold on to until you're about to get an attack off in a matchup like this. You don't want to give Jimmy uh, any value out of Enhanced Hammer uh, just out of the gate there. Right. If you are going to play as many items as Tord's playing, you're going to be skimping out on, on certain things. And Pokemon isn't the only thing he's skimping out on. He also only plays, you know, double colorless energy as his energies. So every energy is just very important, and he wants to make sure that he uh, maximizes the output that they uh, provide him. So... Just going to see this nice standard setup. We fully expect all of this from Tord, and uh, it's going to be on Jimmy to, to match this. What a consistent deck uh, Tord's got as he passes the turn. Jimmy Pendarvis now, his first turn of the game, first turn of the match. Remember, this is the top four, Kyle. So much pressure on both of these players, regardless of how many times you've been there. You know you've got to feel that pressure. Yeah, and, uh, and yet they both seem like they've got ice in their veins. They're just playing it like... Any other game, just any other opponent sitting across from you. No, these are these are two high uh, high up class players, and Jimmy already grabbing the wind pot. It looks like he's going to start working on that strategy as well. Yeah, it looked like he was just looking for the three Pokemon he was going to find with Bridget, and so he just kind of shortcutted there, uh, put the three Pokemon he was going to find with Bridget on the bottom of his deck, then looked uh, looked for Lele, which looked for Bridget, and uh, now we see all four Pokemon on the bench here for Jimmy. Triple Zorua with a Wimpod to go with it. Yeah, Wimpod is going to be pretty important with all the energy denial that Tord has in his deck. Uh, grass energies on Glycopod are going to be difficult to remove. So if he does bring up Glycopod and start using that as a main attacker, we could definitely see that become uh, pretty effective. Both of these players not... Well, both of these decks not known for their explosive turn ones, but it's uh, turn two that you really have to start fearing from these... Uh, from these decks is once you get, you know, your your little mini army of um, uh, Zoroarks, you're able to just draw into so so much of your deck that you're almost assured to see uh, the energies you need to be able to draw, uh, to be able to put pressure on your opponent. Yeah, Jimmy's hand does not look nearly as explosive as Tord's hand. Tord is, I believe, holding on to double Evo Soda Zorark. So uh, he's going to draw all the cards and uh, be in a very <laughs> favorable spot. All right. This happens pretty often in the Pokemon trading card game where, you know, our uh, accessories get battle damage on them. Massacred. <laughs> and we're forced to replace the sleeves. Sure enough, that is what's happening here with Jimmy. And um, I'm assuming we're going to see a very powerful turn here from Tord. And we may see the first prize of the game taken by Tord uh, before, before too much longer. No, absolutely. That, that's definitely something that could happen. He's, he's honestly just a Guzma in a DCE away, a Floatstone in a DCE away, and this is before he even gets to draw all six cards with trade. Another sleeve rip. It happens. <laughs> what can you say? 
<laughs> Jimmy is just too strong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's been working out. Yeah. They, we're going to invent a sleeve that's uh, bulky enough for Jimmy to handle. Both of these players having a good little chuckle about it. Uh, or at least one of these players is having a good chuckle about it. As, um, you know, they do have to replace the second sleeve. Now, I, I, I agree with you that Jimmy's going to have to be the, uh, the aggressor here as the late game is just obviously going to favor the player who has resource management available to him. And um, just so many ways of getting rid of the very few energy that Jimmy does play. Uh, now, with that said, anytime Jimmy plays a double puzzle at a time, he's going to want to maximize the number of, um, of attacks he'll be able to get out of that double puzzle at a time. If you have to double puzzle at a time for something like, say, Acerola or something like that, then you may not be able to uh, squeeze out the six prizes you need. Yeah, and, uh, and those, those puzzles might just have to be dedicated to grabbing energies back in a matchup like this. Exactly. All right. It's like Jimmy's turn's finally done. <laughs> double checking, all right. A little time's been... Uh, oh, that's... Uh, it's passed. got two double colorless. He's ready. Okay, so do two double colorless, but uh, we do see that Evo Soda, too. First Evo Soda played. Does he have the double Evo Soda with the Zoroark you were talking about? I guess we'll find out soon. He's going to take a peek through. He's going to be able to see six cards. Uh, so Guzma or Floatstone will be able to get him this opening knockout. Uh, we'll really see what his strategy is here. Does he want to just remove the wind pod so that the only attacker is Zork? Zork's very easily uh, countered by his deck with all the special energy denial and uh, max potion that he plays. So he may just go straight after the wind pod, or you could just remove the, the draw engine of Jimmy's deck. We saw Tord uh, look through his deck a couple of times and then put one of the Zorks on the bottom of the deck because he knew he was going to find it with the Evo Soda that he just played. So that's two Evo Sodas down, two Zorks in play, and uh, we barely started towards second turn here. This is the most Tord thing you are going to see uh, all tournament. He does this all the time, finding those Zorks. They just seem to fall into his hand every time he plays a game. Imagine how great you would feel if you got to do this for uh, two days straight. <laughs> Just, you know, triple Zorg, no big deal. Cloud nine right there, I'll tell you that. Toward Reckliff now getting his first trade of the game. Second trade now. Yeah, finds himself double end, so still doesn't have it. Looking for Floatstone or Guzma. Well, that's all three trades gone. Does he have a Floatstone or a Guzma? I don't think I saw either. It looks like he has Cynthia in his hand. He could just attach double colorless to his Zorark. Cynthia and try to find a Floatstone. If he doesn't seem if it, to think that that's going to be too likely, we could just see him uh, attach and pass, or just pass, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I think I think playing Cynthia makes sense here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if, if you draw it, it's it's a huge swing. You're able to remove the Zeru from play. Uh, All you need to do is find a floatstone here if you're uh, if you're toward. That's it. You well, know he, how difficult can that be? He plays one, so. <laughs> How difficult can it be, Kyle? For Tord, not very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one floatstone in the entire deck. Can he find it off this six-card Cynthia? This is the first big moment of the game. It could prove to be a very uh, momentum-shifting turn, and he does not find it. He yeah, finds three Ultra Ball and an Evo Soda. All the Pokemon in his, on his field are already evolved, so not going to get any use out of those cards. It's going to be a lot of trade fodder. Yeah, he definitely knows what he's going to be trading away. But uh, in the meantime, Jimmy Pendarvis now starting his second turn. Will he be able to have the uh, the type of explosion Tor just had? Well, that's one Zoroark. Zoroark can play. Yeah. One third of the way there. <laughs> definitely a good start for him. Uh, unfortunately, there are no knockouts available for him unless he feels the need to target down a Rangaroo just this early. Uh, he's probably just going to be attacking into some of these Pokemon. Max Potion. Max Potion traded away. Pretty important card, but... Jimmy just kind of has all those cards that he wants in the mid-stage of the game. Looks like he has some puzzle pieces and uh, a Sycamore option. Yeah, he has a double color synergy with a couple of puzzle pieces. Um, but uh, it's not going to be a knockout. However, 100 damage onto a Tapu Lele is not irrelevant as we see the first bit of damage dealt from either player in this match. Toward already holding on to double puzzle of himself. He is uh, in a pretty good spot here. Gets to do three trades. And Trade number one. Going to be looking for Ace Arola most likely. If he plays that card. <laughs> I think he does have one. Finds a Mallow, but uh, choosing to just trade one more time. Finds a Delinquent with that. 
Yeah, I think Acerola was the other card tucked in with that delinquent. So okay. pretty nice find for him. Going to be able to pick up the Tapu Lele that's damaged. Good eyes, as that was Ace Roller right beneath uh, the delinquent. He has an Evo Soda that he can get rid of. Absolutely not helping his cause here. Yeah, he, he could also have his eyes on a Guzma. If he was able to find that, maybe he's got a decision to make. Does find Guzma here, so uh, we could really find a lot about towards strategy in this game. Does he really want to just target down Zerua's wind pods, or is he just looking uh, to have this battle of attrition use this Ace Roller? Looks like he's going for the Ace Roller. Can't really blame him. Doesn't want to give Jimmy uh, the easy prizes that he uh, he kind of craves, right? Like if you're Jimmy, you're you're craving easy prizes. You're craving uh, putting yourself down to two prizes remaining while Ford still is struggling to get rid of your energy on the field. So an Ace Roller does uh, kind of help out Ford's long-term game plan out. Who is absolutely trying to extend this game as much as possible. Yeah, any, any turn that Tord does not use Acerola or Max Potion on a Pokemon, fully expect Jimmy to be targeting it down because that's pretty much the only way that he gets to, to stay in this game is just by stealing away all those prize cards. With that said, it's not like he has too many of them, so uh, Jimmy's early aggression is definitely looking to pay off here. With it, While he still has to kind of... Um, Make sure that he doesn't give up these early prizes from uh, from Ford either, because that losing your double colorless energy is the natural way, you know, by getting knocked out. Yeah. That's even more painful than losing them through uh, <laughs> Team Flare Grant. Yeah, that hurts. And uh, Jimmy does not get to do very much here; just a hundred damage. He's uh, he's still in range of being knocked out just by a choice band here yeah. uh, on the Zorark. So pretty unfortunate for him. He hasn't been able to do very much. Turn three, and he still only has one Zorark in play before uh, attacking. Now, Tord, obviously a much, much better field here for Tord. Yeah, he's holding on to Max Post in his hand, has double puzzle of time, so uh, definitely expect him to be able to get whatever he needs here. Has the double colorless energy to make up for that Max Post. Going into the second trade here, probably doesn't need that end. Does he, does he have a field blower in hand? Checking the discard pile. It looks like he does have a field blower in the discard pile if he really values that. That is one way to get to the amount of damage that you need. Also, Delinquent is a way to remove that Parallel City. I like uh, Delinquent a little better than Field Blower. Yeah, seems like a pretty nice way. Get to remove some cards out of Jimmy's hand, and Jimmy has been holding on to some puzzle pieces and, and whatnot. He's, yeah, he's going to actually have to throw it away. Puzzle, Glycopod, and another card go down, uh, as well as the Parallel City. So now a couple of Pokemon away from getting his first knockout here is Tord. Yep, plays his Parallel City of his own. Going to use Tapu Lele and uh, look through his deck. Doesn't really need a supporter card. <laughs> I think he only has like two left in there. Yeah, his deck's down to like 15 cards already. <laughs> and it's only turn four. He's got a Sycamore and two Guzmas in there. And, How uh, powerful is uh, triple, triple trade, man? Uh, it's not bad. All right, finds a Sycamore with that Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag. Ultra Ball. This is going for the Tapu Lele. It's going to be able to get him to that fifth bench spot that he needs. Uh, and that's going to be 120 damage with Riotus beating. Yep, finds Tapu Lele, which, which finds Guzma. Could definitely put, uh, be a, an important card here in the next few turns. But more importantly, he has a full bench, which means Zorark, the one Zorark in Jimmy's field, is going to be knocked out by the end of this turn. Yeah, where do you go from there? <laughs> well, <laughs> straight to game two if you can't find another Zorark. <laughs> All right. So Tord does still have the option if he wants to use Max Potion and then play the double colorless energy in his hand. Leaves himself with a clean field. Everything is looking to go towards Wade here. Also has those double puzzle of time in his hand. So we'll have that available to him in the future turns. Also saw the last two pieces of uh, puzzle of time in his deck. So going to get the full use out of that this game. Knockout here from Tord. Jimmy Pendarvis loses the first uh, Pokemon of the game here as Tord does go to four prizes against Jimmy Six in this first game of the top four match between Tord Reckliff and Jimmy Pendarvis. If Jimmy doesn't have anything to do, I think he only has three cards in his hand. Delinquent could basically just seal this out. So uh, hoping to see something this turn. Jimmy looking through his discard pile 
Yeah, it looks like he has double. Wow, he had double puzzle now. Yep. So this is going to be Evo Soto for Zorark. Then Tapu Lele is going to search out for N, and he's going to shuffle the other puzzle piece back into his deck, and then he's going to start using trades, try to get back onto the board. I can respect that play, and sure enough, Jimmy now playing an N, shuffling back uh, the single card in his hand, which was a puzzle of time, into his deck, drawing six new cards toward going down to four cards in hand. He had a world of options, and they're all gone back into the deck. But keep in mind, Tord's triple uh, trade will uh, basically fill that hand right back up. Yeah, he's only got 20 cards in there, so he's definitely going to find all of those right back very soon. Stoic is Tord. There's no real other way to describe it right now. Nothing phases him right now. He knows he's in the driver's seat. Jimmy not only had to be the aggressor in this matchup, but has fallen behind. Yeah, he found double colorless energy, so he can at least get a little bit of damage. Uh, that Parallel City is providing a pretty big distraction, though. Only 80 damage uh, starts to get awkward. Trades away Cynthia, draws two cards, does not have another Zoroark. He's finding awkward pieces of his deck. He's got he's to keep going, though. He's got that double colorless energy, so... Yeah, he can only really muster up a double colorless energy to deal 80 damage onto towards Zorark. Not enough. But, I mean, remember, uh, if Tord does play Enhanced Hammer, which he has in hand, like, how often can Jimmy keep doing this? Remember we said uh, his puzzle at times needed to be for <laughs> more energies. <laughs> that was... Uh, that was uh, two Enhanced Hammer that he found off of that trade. So I think he's in a pretty good spot here. Going to be able to remove uh, the energies off of Jimmy's side of the board. Yeah, just so important here. I mean, we're almost... Cut finds like double, double puzzle at time. Puzzle. Yeah, that's okay, exactly well. what you want to find if you're toward. He, he's even at a spot where if he wanted to, he could use uh, Enhanced Hammer on the active Zoroark. He could Ace Arola with a double puzzle and start using resource management if he wanted to. Uh, he's really not in any danger. If he wanted to just uh, flood his deck with a bunch of resources, he, he could certainly do that. Tord is not a man. He is a machine, Kyle, I tell you. That is just un unbelievable how uh, dominant he, he is in this game. Uh, just kind of like taking every option away from Jimmy Pendarvis before he even has it available to him. Yeah, now we're just going to see if Tor decides to go aggressive here. He, he has that option uh, to slow it down. Uh, Jimmy's already playing pretty slow, so <laughs> you, you could play slow a little better than him, or you can just uh, keep the pace going. Double puzzle of time, finds Ace Rolla and a double color synergy. Yeah, looked like he, he eyed up those three cards, so potentially going to go with that uh, Oranguru route. Ace Arola now played. Zorak back up to the hand. Oh, okay. Zorak hits the active position. No, this is this is completely fine too. 120 damage into the Zorak. Uh, you can just keep your keep your foot on the pedal. Yeah, I don't think it's resource management time yet. I think uh, you actually can just flat out win the old fashioned way right now. So why not just keep putting Jimmy in uncomfortable positions where he has to just choose between you know. Uh, it, well, Jimmy's between a rock and a hard place right now, and uh, he's just got to find a way out of this. And the, the tighter toward uh, uh, pushes against Jimmy here, the, the more difficult it becomes for Jimmy to kind of squirm out of it. And Floatstone played onto Zorark. Counter Countercatcher as well. Countercatcher finding a Zorua to become the active Pokemon. And now an end. Jimmy draws six. Toward draws four. Yeah, this is one way for Jimmy to, to get back in. If Tord doesn't have the trade available, uh, that's one less trade down if he finds double colorless energy to knock out this Sarua. And maybe Tord actually does start to draw dead off of some ends in the future. The tension is high. Will Jimmy be able to find what he needs to bring himself right back into this game? Well, six cards and a few trades certainly help. Has Mewtwo, has Glycopod. As Ultra Ball hitting the discard pile. Trade number one. Trade number two, a second Ultra Ball. The Lysopod now. Looks like he's just going to take that knockout. This, uh, this also leaves an opening for Tord uh, because that Zorark is so easily knocked out on the bench. 
We could see Tord starting to take a few more prizes and only be at two prize cards left. Rangaroo time, at least for now. <laughs> until he until he draws Guzma. Well, he's got he's got two trades available. No Guzma just yet. This actually could be resource man. I think uh, I think Tord's okay with doing a re having resource management turn, but he's also perfectly okay with drawing a, a, into a Guzma and knocking out the the Zorg, You know. Yeah, no, that would that would work out just fine. He's gonna see what he draws and then uh, adjust from there. Has Mallow in his hand, so if his first trade doesn't go his way, maybe trade he decides one. to go a different route. Wow, those are good cards. Just wow. <laughs> I, I can't see Torrent's face, but his <laughs> hand immediately shot up to his face. <laughs> I, I would have to imagine he's holding in a chuckle <laughs> as he sees those cards. Oh man. I know my parents always told me to, not to, to let the green-eyed monster take over me, but <laughs> I'm telling you. Hey, greedy is nice, especially when it gets you these prize cards. All right, Zorua now. Another Pokemon benched here for Tord. He really wants to see that third Zorua. Well, Tord has a decision to make. Does he use these double puzzles to maybe find Enhanced Hammer and just make it that much harder? for Jimmy to attack into him this turn, or is he gonna hold on to those uh, and just be content with these two prize cards? Beautiful little Guzma there. The Guzma does promote uh, Jimmy's damage Zorark, and 120 damage onto that Zorark means Tord is now two prizes away from taking this first game in this top four matchup. And he just found a max potion out of his prize cards too. So uh, any damage that Jimmy is going to be able to do could immediately be nullified if he doesn't have an end to go along with this turn. Just seems like Jimmy just hasn't had as nearly as many options as Tord. Jimmy has just been struggling so hard to get anything going here. A lot of it has to do with just the early turns here from Tord just uh, were too consistent for Jimmy's uh, unusually bad hand, having only a single Zorark by like turn four is just not something you you expect for your deck to do for you yeah. in, in such a pivotal matchup. But keep in mind, this is still only game one. You have to win two out of three games in order to uh, advance to the finals. So not all hope is lost for Jimmy here. Yeah, even if Jimmy isn't able to come out on top, he's going to get a lot of information. If he didn't already know all the cards in Tord's deck, he's probably going to see them all by the end of this game. And it's also nice to just see how your opponent goes about this matchup. You might be able to come up with a secondary strategy. Yeah, uh, every minute counts whenever, when, when you're thinking about what you have to do when you have to think on the fly, of course, since there is a time limit that you have to adhere to. And sometimes the strategies just are not so obvious. Every matchup seems to be, you know, at least a little bit differently, different. And uh, this pseudo mirror match between uh, the two Zorark decks just proves exactly what we mean. Field Blower gets rid of the Parallel City. And now Jimmy immediately plays a Parallel City of his own. Enhance Hammer. Lots of items here in Jimmy's hand get, get played for maximum effect. Yeah, this means that Tord's limited to only 80 damage uh, going into this turns. 80 damage for Jimmy as well, though. And remember, Tord only has three card hand. <laughs> his hand is Guzma DCE and Enhance Hammer. Oh, <laughs> that's is that all? <laughs> he, I don't even know what you trade. <laughs> Do you trade? <laughs> yeah, you probably trade away the yeah. hammer. I think he. Yeah, I yeah. Guess he's gonna be fine with it. All right, enhance hammer gone. The tough decisions have been made. Much easier decisions from here on out, or at least you would think so, as he draws two other relevant cards. Yeah, could uh, he could use field blower on the parallel city. Rescue Stretcher a Tapu Lele, and then maybe find a supporter that he wants to use other than Guzma. Instead, he trades away that Field Blower. That's two trades now. Rescue Stretcher is going to probably uh, try to find Zorark. Yeah, Zorark's in there, so that's one more trade for him. All right. He has access to one more trade if he wants it. And of course he wants it. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> Tapu Lele gone. All right, so he's got one puzzle piece. It looks like he's probably just going to get some chip damage on uh, a Pokemon here. Could go after the Golisopod that would negate any uh, first impression potential damage, or could just work on a Tapu Lele, being that it has uh, less hit points. 
Uzma brings up a Glycopod. Oh, now. it's resource management time. Giving the crowd what they want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Oranguru, resource management to the maximum. Yep, he has so many cards that would be nice to shuffle back into his deck. Uh, really just puzzle, puzzle, energy. Yeah, those work. Yep. Always the first targets that you go for. Or I shouldn't say always, but 90% of the time, these are uh, the first cards that you try to get. Uh, double color synergy and your double puzzle at a time. Just kind of want to fill the rest of your deck up with just nothing but the best cards in your deck. Yep, double colorless energy means that you can resource management as much as you need. Double puzzle turns into any two cards in your discard pile. So if you need an Ace of Rolla, if you need a Max Potion, he's got gotcha. you. Jimmy showing his discard pile to Tord as he starts his turn. You know yep. your opponent's been shuffling in resources. You can't just let him do that without, without paying some sort of a cost. Jimmy is going to be trying to find some way to do relevant damage here. Currently doing 10 damage. Sycamore. First impression, so. This is a desperation. Sycamore here for Jimmy as his deck is running really, really low. Something like five cards now. Found double colorless energy, so he has ways to remove uh, Oranguru. Yeah, he can, uh, he can definitely knock out the Oranguru, but, I mean, at what cost? Your opponent's obviously already... Uh, manages his resources uh, that he needs. He has triple Zora, can play. He's going to be able to trade like crazy. Obviously, you expect to see things like Enhance Hammer, um, etc. Is that going to be enough? I mean, what other choice does Jimmy have? Uh, I'm not sure. He, he can either take this knockout or try to hold on. Uh, he's got Counter Catcher, so if he wants to go after the Zorak that's damaged, he has that uh, option as well. But it looks like he's going to use Crossing Cut GX and remove this foreign guru from the field. Crossing Cut GX is the GX attack of choice here for Jimmy Pendarvis as he now takes two prizes, or, uh, well, a prize and goes uh, to two prizes, having two prizes taken. Yeah, Tord is going to do a little count, make sure nothing wild happens here. All right, you stop your opponent from being able to manage his resources for the, from here on out, at least for the time being. An end gets discarded here from Tord. It's one trade. Zorark, second trade. Looking for another puzzle of time, looking for the enhanced hammer. Enhanced hammer he just found. Yeah, he's got the enhanced hammer. One more puzzle could basically uh, put him in a dominant spot here. Another puzzle it. of time. So now you can actually just basically get rid of all the energy on towards or on Jimmy's field with the exception of the grass uh, if you want to do that. I mean, really, you have so many options available to you. Double puzzle was exactly what uh, Tord wanted here to almost almost lock the game up. All right, so he, go, he can go Enhanced Hammer, uh, remove this energy, double puzzle, grab Oranguru and Enhanced Hammer, uh, Guzma to bring up Zorak or Tapu Lele, and then start resource managing again uh, with the double colorless energy that's already in his hand. Put your opponent in a position where all he's going to have left is grass energies. As uh, I believe Jimmy has exactly two puzzle of times left in his deck. Uh, yeah, I think he's holding on to. to I think he might actually have them in hand. Uh, okay. He, he, I saw them shuffling around in his hand. Max potion from Tord. So now it's up to Tord. He can make the decision to either go into uh, Oranguru uh, with this puzzle, or he can uh, split it go with a enhanced hammer and attack into the Tapu Lele. He is only two prizes away from winning this game. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not quite sure. He's actually choosing not to get an enhanced hammer, by the way, so yeah, he, maybe he doesn't fear that uh, Golisopod as much as we do. Yeah, right now, Golisopod actually just doesn't knock out Oranguru because of the way the Parallel City is pointed, so he's not threatened by that. And, uh, we probably are going to see just Guzma on the, the Zorark uh, oh, look at that. He's thinking of bringing up Glycopod right now. Well, then. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to worry about first impression if it's already active. Uh, and he could just resource management, get some nice cards in there, and grab the Enhanced Hammer on the following turn. There's uh, no real threat. So now Tord looking. Of course, I expect to see maybe Double Puzzle with uh, another Double Call is 
There it is. Double puzzle with double coast with only six cards left in your deck and triple trade available to you. <laughs> yeah, this is the spot that he wants to be in. The dream. Just deciding which order he wants the cards uh, <laughs> to end up in on the bottom of his deck. He's considering having... Okay, he's going to go with the double puzzle on the bottom. Okay. So double coast... Or on the, on the top, excuse me. Well, double coast will be the last card he, uh, he draws into. Yeah. Jimmy Pendarvis starts his own turn now. He has a delinquent in hand. Yeah, that actually gets pretty tricky. Yeah. Okay, let's see how many cards Sword had in his hand. He only had three, more or less. And uh, okay, so no cards in hand and only six cards left in deck. But you cannot knock out this Oranguru. Double, Double puzzle of time. Maybe you can. He would be eyeing up uh, potentially some Pokemon so that Zora could come into uh, attack with Riotous beating. I mean, this is basically a chess match at this point where pretty much all the information is out, on the, uh, out in the open here for Jimmy. And he has essentially perfect information with the exception of the top of uh, Tord's deck. But if Jimmy feels like he has an opening here and he sees it, then we'll definitely see him go for it. Yep, I'm assuming that that last card in his hand is Wimpod. Yep, so he could go for Riotous Beating into Orenkuru. And this puts Tord into an awkward spot. He's not going to want to... He has the double color synergy for that Riotous Beating, uh, Kyle. Yeah. Orenkuru goes down. Only six cards left in Tord's deck and no cards in hand. Forced to, uh, forced to trade away the double puzzle of time or the single puzzle of time. His deck is literally just puzzles and double color of synergy. He's, a, he's, Kyle. he's trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. We know that the last card in his deck is a double colorless, so if he uh, trades away a puzzle, he's going to get double puzzle. But can he afford to do so? Well, let's see. If he ends up going with it, he could grab Oranguru with a Guzma and then resource management again. Uh, the problem is that if Jimmy is able to retreat, then he'll just get knocked out again and he'll have to try that all over. I mean, Jimmy is just operating on perfect information, and Tord does not have the same. But Tord is only two prizes away. Can the three-card deck slash two-card hand provide Tord with a victory? He also can't play too low. He could just end himself and almost lose the game. He's going to pass. Passes, chooses not to play anything, including the double colors in his hand. This, uh, this plays into double puzzle time into Ace Arola to, to work out the Oranguru play. This means that you get to hold on to a Jimmy little bit more. Jimmy just deals 120 damage. <laughs> Quote, unquote, just. Yeah, All right, no has double deal. puzzle of time. He did not want to attach anything, maybe because he needs to uh, hold on to all three cards to get his desired effect. Looks like he's going for Oranguru and maybe a Floatstone. I was thinking uh, Ace Rolla potentially. He's oh, going to actually course. go with Guzma, though. Yeah. Of course, that makes some sense. There's the Guzma. Brings up a Wimpod. Oh, no. Lots of retreat costs there. No hand for Tord. Only a two-card deck. Jimmy Pendarvis on three prizes remaining. Tord still has two. <laughs> Just has all the puzzles. We know that the top card of Tord's deck is a puzzle. The bottom card is a double colorless. Yep. So if he goes puzzle, double colorless, triple puzzle, okay. That's the five card deck Tord's got to play with. Again, perfect information for Jimmy. Jimmy needs to find a way out of the active spot. He's got three prizes left, so Zorg is an easy way to take two of those if he does have access to Guzma. I do see cards like uh, Grass Energy in his hand, so if he does have to retreat the old-fashioned way, that there is potential for that, but it would leave uh, this Oranguru resource seat, uh, using resource management for a lot of different cards that Tord... You can't really give him that much time. Tord has ran Jimmy out of so many resources. You have to believe that Jimmy's just super low on his own. Look at how thin Jimmy's deck is, too. You, I mean, of course, Jimmy's going to be the first one to deck. That's, there's no doubt about that one. But um, Enhance Hammer from, uh, from Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy's just gonna pass turn. All right, so Tord now can just use trade, uh, discard the puzzle, 
But uh, if he trades, he's going to trade into a double colorless in a puzzle. Yeah, and then so you can he's just... going to have to trade away the double colorless here. You can just or actually trade away the, the if he wants to. Uh, he he might just be trying to to build this back up. Because if he does go to that that awkward stage of just three cards in deck, uh, you might get into a spot where you could just like lose to an end or something. You, you just want to make sure that you have a, a decent amount of cards in your deck. Sure. Those are fine cards to have. Rescue Stretcher turns into three more cards, uh, so that's a little extra room in his deck. Looks like those are going to be the cards he chooses, Rescue Stretcher being the bottom card, uh, Double Colorless Energy the middle card, and Puzzle of Time the top one. Counter Catcher, bring up that Zorark that's got 120 damage on it, and pass. Yeah, just Double Puzzle in hand for Tord. Of course, he's going to play it. No reason not to. Yep. Potentially Ace Arola here. Yep. Could go for that Ace Arola right now if he wants to. It also picks up two cards, so uh, if he wanted to use those for trades in the future, he could. If he just wants more cards uh, in the net of his deck and hand. That I actually would prefer to see an Enhance Hammer here, too, from, uh, from Tord. I think your opponent has shown that his hand is completely out of gas. Your opponent's got a very low deck. You just you win the game by uh, by locking out of energies here. Oh. Ends up but. grabbing Cynthia, and he's uh, gonna hold on to that. Okay, so Ace roll is up the Zorg and uh, holds onto it in his hand before before uh, resource managing double colorless and double puzzle of time into his deck. Yeah, I think if Jimmy passes this turn, well, first he's uh, he's out of cards, <laughs> so uh, that'll be it. Wow. Okay. Oh, Jimmy Pendarvis decks out in game one uh, between Tord Reckliff and Jimmy Pendarvis. I mean, yeah, that's how that's how long this game went. That's how uh, intense it really got. As Jimmy did what he could, but I mean, of course, he ran out of resources. Like, like we were talking about, Tord just slowly but surely said, "Your options are few, but uh, but they're gonna get you become even less uh, as every turn progresses." Yeah, it got a little scary, honestly. Uh, Tord played his uh, his. Whole hand down, had what four cards in deck, three cards uh, at times, and uh, he, he still managed to just keep finding that Oran Guru using resource management. And Jimmy just seemed to be a few cards off. If he, maybe he had one more Guzma, one more Floatstone, uh, he could have made that an even closer match or game. Yeah, we said the key to the game was going to be for for Jimmy to be able to use these uh, double puzzle at times to be proactive with, right? Yeah. Uh, to, to find more double color synergies so he makes it that much harder for Tor to be able to slow him down before he can take the six prizes. Instead, what we saw him do was play double puzzle at time for, I believe, uh, a supporter and another puzzle at time. That's how, that's how poor this game uh, worked out for Jimmy at the beginning of the game as he was not proactive. He was forced to be the reactive player and he just was not in a position to take all six prizes before he ran out of cards. Yeah, now the amount of time that was taken to play that game, almost half of the series is gone. Uh, I think that actually kind of favors Jimmy a little bit. If exactly Jimmy is happened, able yeah. to, to win uh, a game two, his deck is a little more aggressive. It's got a little more attack power. Uh, so if they played it into a game three, uh, I, you'd have to think with only five, 10 minutes in a game three that Jimmy would be favored over Tord. Yeah, especially because he has multiple attacking options. Um, Stronger G or a GX attack you can use. Uh, <laughs> so definitely seems to be advantage, Jimmy, if you do go into that sudden death situation. But uh, I mean, still, there's exactly half the time, uh, half the time left in the round. So that was just such a long game one, despite the fact that both players played, you know, at a very reasonable pace. Yeah. Jimmy now is just going to be eyeing up that classic start, something that. He was missing. He was not able to get down multiple Zoroarks. So definitely wants to find that this game going first. All right, both players playing their prizes down. We see a double color synergy for uh, Jimmy and really just a field floor on a couple of bridges for Tord. Two ends as well. The handshake and these players are underway. He only has one bridge left in his deck. So he's gonna struggle to find a, a turn one bridge at Will Tord. Or at least you would think so mathematically. Tapalele doesn't care about math. <laughs> Towards Tapalele doesn't care about math. <laughs> All right, Ultra Ball discarding another Ultra Ball and a Glycopod. 
finding Jimmy the Tapu Lele, which is going to find him a Bridget. Triple Zorua. All right. Good start here for Jimmy as he does go first in the second game. Has that Wimp pod starting. That means he could always use his ability Wimp out if he wanted to switch into a Zorua, potentially uh, start eyeing up a turn two knockout with a Zorark into a Zorua. Jimmy still looking through his deck as he shuffles it, uh, trying to find out what resources he will not have available to him until he starts taking surprises. Tord looks confident, but I have not taken a look at his hand. I don't know if he's got a turn one Bridget available to him. He, he does have Ultra Ball in his hands. And of he has, course he's got Ultra Ball. Okay, and there it is. And he's Tord, so he's got double puzzle. So <laughs> there, there are ways to do it. it. It may be a little more clunky than he's used to, but... He's also got a Cynthia in there as well, so. All right, Ultra Ball discarding a Mew EX and a Guzma. Looks through his deck, no doubt finding a Tapu Lele, mirroring Jimmy's play here. At least you can only assume he will be. He's taking a look. You may see all four Zoros in play by the end of this turn. Yeah, I, I fully expect to see that. Especially with uh, the potential for one of these Zoros to be knocked out. Uh, by Jimmy if Jimmy does have a nice supporter to go along with this pretty nice turn one he had. Ford still looking through his deck, looking to see what cards are possibly prized. Tapu Lele, Wonder tags in a Bridget. Bridget tags in three Zoruas. Ford Reckliff with all four Zoros in play by the end of his first turn. Classic. It's only a single bridge in the deck. <laughs> All right. Well, we will have a very consistent start from both of these players, assuming their hands do not uh, fail to produce Zoroarks. Yeah, uh, definitely we know over on Tord's side that uh, he will be able to find something. He does have that Cynthia double puzzle, so uh, could definitely go find Ultra Ball if it gets uh, to that point, or he could just use the Cynthia try to find some Zoroarks of his own. Jimmy, we not, did not get to really see his hand too much. So I'm sure he'll let us know right now how he's feeling. Parallel City gets rid of the Tapu Lele. Of course, not the Zora. Uh, and an end here right after playing his first Zorark. Yeah, this is a pretty good start. He's got one Zorark already in play. Going to be looking for multiple Zorarks and a double colorless energy. A classic turn two at a Zoropod. Yeah, and uh, that Parallel City also doing quite a bit of work, st stopping your opponent from being able to get 120 damage onto uh, your Zorark, forces him to find a field blower before he can 2 a KO your, uh, your Zorark. Yeah, maybe Tord needs to use Tapu Lele next turn, and he just won't have the bench base. Well, actually, if the Zorark is knocked out, he'd find it. <laughs> that does depend on Jimmy finding a double colorless. Oh, looks like... Can we find another, another Zorark yet? Not yet. Evo Soda, there we go. Zorark number two. I mean, right away, it's a more consistent start than he had game one. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a little more of a game on this turn. Uh, he's, he's got, I believe I saw the double colors in Gina's hand as well. Bridget discarded, it's trade number two. Lysopod, that's three evolutions now. And Zorark does get the double colors energy attached to it. Riot is beating. Down goes Zorua. Jimmy Pendarvis deals first blood here in game two. Yeah, it's a very nice opening for him. He's he's holding on to an enhanced hammer, so he's going to be ready if uh, Tord is able to uh, have any bit of retaliation. Now, that is an open spot to the bench here for Tord, and right away he takes advantage of it, playing a Tapu Lele, wonder tagging. Looks like he's eyeing up a Sycamore. He has a, a few cards that he can play in his hand. He has cards like Field Blower. Just remove that Parallel City if he wants to. But Sycamore seems like a pretty solid play for him. Gives him the most odds to draw into those Zoroarks and uh, start to start to match what Jimmy was able to produce on that second turn. Yep, does find Sycamore with that Tapu Lele. How many Zoroarks can he get into play, though? Looks like he can get one in before he plays that Sycamore. Counter First, catcher. though, counter counter or counter catcher, uh, bringing up Glycopod. No first impression here. Field blower gets rid of Parallel City. First impression for sure. 
Oh, it looks like he didn't actually have uh, Ultra Ball. It was actually a puzzle at times, so still no Zoroark in, uh, in towards hand. And looks like he's going to be forced to Ultra Ball for a Zoroark if he wants to find one. Yeah, Tord found no Evo Sodas, no uh, Zoroark GXs. He's just going to have to use that Ultra Ball and hopefully chain them together off of the trade. Yeah, hopefully he's, uh, hopefully he's right because he's going to be forced to trade here with honestly not a very exciting hand. Yeah, it, it's actually pretty relevant if Tord is able to evolve all of these Zoroarks. If Jimmy's able to target down one of these Zoruas with Guzma, Tord really doesn't get nearly as much done with only two Zoroarks in play. I mean, given Tord's hand, that just seems so unlikely. He's going to have to hit just gold off of this next trade, off of this only trade so far. What does he discard here? It looks like he's benching the Oranguru, plays double colors, and just doesn't even trade. He's going to hold on to the cards. Deals 100 damage onto the Golisopod. Yep, 100 is relevant. That means that Riotus Beating could attack in and hit for uh, 120 damage if he does ever find that fifth Pokemon. So it's nice to be able to get that those numbers worked out. And over on Jimmy's side, definitely going to be looking for a Guzma. Just wants to remove these Zeruas from play. If you don't have trades, it's going to be hard to win. Two immediate trades from Jimmy. Uh, Enhance Hammer, getting rid of the double colorless energy. Does Jimmy have a, a Guzma here? There it is, Guzma. Bring up that Zorua. All right, Riot is beating. Down goes Zorua. Jimmy now. Can he do it? I mean, this is definitely the way to start it. it Tord is only going to have access to potentially two trades. Oh, well, two trades. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, two trades. And uh, he's got that N. The N means that he won't be able to target down that Golisopod this turn, but he could probably get some fairly relevant damage onto the Zorark uh, that Jimmy's been attacking with uh, throughout this game so far. It's going to be pretty important that Tord starts to find cards like Enhanced Hammer. Just needs to make uh, Jimmy work a little extra harder to find cards like Double Colorless Energy, make him discard resources through trade so that you can get him into that same spot you did uh, in game one. Six card hand for Tord now, four for Jimmy. Enhanced Hammer Double Puzzle is pretty good. About on par. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's okay with it. Double Puzzle, it seems like those cards are just very, very attached to Tord. <laughs> All right, Wonder Tag here from uh, from Tord. Yeah, he also has Acerola in his hand, so if Jimmy just attacks into Zorark, he can always just pick it back up. Uh, it's the least uh, favorite option that he has to heal. It means that he would have to play down Zerua again, and then Zerua is pretty vulnerable to just being knocked out by a Guzma. So maybe he's going to choose to discard that option and uh, focus on those max potions instead. Or trading. Gets rid of Guzma. Trade number two. Gets rid of Ultra Ball. Draws two more cards. Does have that Enhanced Hammer. Does have Double Colorless Energy as well. Going to hit for that relevant 100 damage that he's always trying to hit for. It, it leaves that opportunity for 120 to sneak in later and knock out these Pokemon. 100 damage onto that Zorark. And now that Zorark is in... Uh, Imminent danger here. There's so much damage onto the Jimmy side of the field, but uh, still no knockouts from Tord. And Jimmy immediately just plays an end here. There's no damage on Tord's field, so there's no knockout available to Jimmy. But um, you have to believe that Jimmy's just looking for more, more ways to kind of uh, disrupt Tord while gaining some aggression on his own. Maybe a max potion here. He does play one. Yep, that's the one card that I could think of in that scenario for him. He has two trades available as well. So one trade gone, one to go. Could potentially get a third trade down if he finds a third Zorark. I think he does have the other Zorark in his hand as well. He has a grass energy, but don't really want to start working with that Golisopod. It's got too much damage on it. There's that third Zorark. Max Potion. That lone Max Potion in his deck. Devoting that resource to the Golisopod as it's going to be his attacker of choice, seeing as how it's the energy that he's got available to him. 
120 damage onto the Zoroark. Well, trade number one. Uh, Tord is probably just going to try to look for double colorless energy, and immediately he's able to find that. He's holding on to uh, what looks like a max potion in his hand as well. So can negate this damage and uh, attack for 100 if he wants to. Looks like 120 is going to be uh, more his style. Third top Ulele. Oh, uh, look at that. Field. Team Flare Grunt. That oh, is a huge geez. way to disrupt Jimmy. Uh, he can remove that grass energy from the, uh, from the field. He can remove the damage counters from the Zorark and attack in for 120 damage. That's a pretty devastating turn. That's the strategy, right? Yeah. Uh, rid uh, Jimmy of any type of energy that he's got available to him. Look at Double this. Double Colors onto that Oranguru. It's resource management time, but not before you play a max potion toward. Yep, he thinks that this is going to be his best turn to start using resource management. Uh, Jimmy's in a very awkward spot. He would need Guzma and a Grass Energy or Guzma and a Double Colorless to get relevant damage onto the board. And he already sees the Floatstone down on the Zorark, so probably not going to have access to that for Golisopod. Pretty nice call here from Tord. First also thing, down in prizes, so Countercatcher is going to help him out too. Yeah, the first thing first was finding that uh, that puzzle of time. You know, you know that's his game plan. Yep. But uh, beyond that, of course, Countercatcher seems to be a very potentially relevant card for uh, for Tord, so he wants to have access to it. And of course, Double Colorless Energy can't can't never go wrong uh, with uh, bringing more Double Colorless Energies back into your deck. Jimmy now starting his turn, no energy in play. Very low hand size. Had to discard a double coalesce energy with trade. Yeah, he's, uh, he's holding on to double puzzle. He looks like he's going to have to fire off here. All right, double puzzle of time. Remember, these resources are so important to him. What's he going to be finding with, these with this double puzzle of time? Looks like it's... Gonna be Zoro with the double colorless. Yep, Jimmy does have that flow stone, so he's gonna be able to knock out this Oranguru. Nice play from Jimmy here. Means Down to three prizes. It's gonna be a little more difficult for Tord to lock in that resource management style of uh, disruption he loves to go with. All right, first trade of the of the turn here for Tord. Does have Mallow. This is a turn where he could actually get some use out of that card. He doesn't really uh, want to do anything too wild here. He, this feels like a really close game to me, Kyle. Yeah, this is this is definitely uh, Jimmy's style if he if he wanted to. He's uh, he's, he's taken a, a few prizes. It, the problem is I just don't see how the other prizes come together unless Tord starts to draw pretty poorly. And uh, there is potential for that, of course. Tord does only have two trades available. Any time that a Zerua comes into play, you'd have to expect Jimmy to knock that out. That's right. Mallow, the support of the turn here for Tord. He's got one puzzle in hand, so he's going to go for the second puzzle. And uh, he could go counter catcher, knock out that Zorark with uh, 100 damage on it. That would, uh, he'd still be down in prizes, so counter catcher would be available to him in future turns as well, and he could remove a little bit of uh, the reach that Jimmy has with all the trades right now. Trade number two, bringing the cards Mallow put on top of the deck into his hand. Gonna parallel start City. with the parallel. Well, first choice, very easy. Second choice, just almost as easy. Got the enhanced Board, hammer. Getting rid of that. Uh, double color synergy and hand hammer just so brutal against these aggressive decks that rely on double color synergy so much. It's monkey time. Double puzzle of time. Sure enough, Oranguru, Floatstone retreats the uh, Zoroark, resource management. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said it felt close. I mean, if I should stay, uh, it feels as close as Jimmy's going to get Yeah. in no, this type of a board. With that said, of course, how? <laughs> How does he pull off the, the victory from here? Um, I think this is actually the most important turn of the game. Uh, this or Oranguru being on the field, if Jimmy's able to remove it from the play, he gets down to two prize cards. And then he just needs to find a way to stick energies onto his Glycopod. And if he can work out the uh, the crossing cut GX onto a Tapu Lele, that's his last two prize cards. 
And that's just been the one thing that he really has struggled with. He hasn't found a way to take a big one-hit knockout on a Pokemon GX. Jimmy's been forced to uh, discard these counter catchers, which are just obviously useless in, in his hand right now. Yeah, he just and doesn't all he have can do is deal resources. 80 damage. Yeah, that's just... You said it was the most important turn, and you weren't kidding. At this point, Tord can close the game out if, if he uh, continues to employ his strategy. Having an extra turn of Oranguru here is just so crucial for him. Yep, and hand hammer. hammer. That's exactly what he wanted to see. Jimmy's got to be running really low on him. Double close energies if not out of him. Yeah, I think I saw at least three. Ace Arola, so the Oranguru gets played right back down into play, and he can just resource management, uh, pull puzzles, and... Bit of a smirk from Jimmy. He knows, <laughs> yeah, knows it's, it's a rough it's, spot. It's hard. Counter catcher on top of things. Yep, let's bring means. up the yeah. Let's bring up that Galisopod, which is the only real threatening Pokemon. No first impression available for Jimmy. Countercatcher, Acerola, Hand Stammer. When you don't have Puzzle of Time in your discard pile, you can start going after these other things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Double yeah. Colors, so. I don't. I don't mind going for the double colors here. Just can continue on if Jimmy were to able uh, to find an Hand Stammer. All right, right away, first trade. Gets rid of that Ultra Ball. Clearly not what he wants in his hand right now. Jimmy, pretty low on resources, both in his deck and in his hand. Rainbow Energy gets discarded. Of course, it would have been great before, but not so much anymore with the Glycopod being the active Pokemon to start the turn off. Third Zoroark now in play. He can <laughs> choose to trade again, but... You see why this just looks like such a rough matchup here for Jimmy. Yeah, I think Jimmy would like to stick a Grass Energy to his Golisopod. Of course, that means that he can't be in the active spot because then Team Player Grunt could remove that Grass Energy. So we, we could see him just, deck. He could the, just attach it and retreat. Yeah, for the first time in a while, we got to take a look at Jimmy's deck and we see how thin it really is. Uh, Bridget, of course, thinning the deck out a little bit more because it's being traded away by Zoroark. Double color synergy. He does find another double color synergy, potentially the last one. And uh, because that field board did, did get rid of that parallel city, we do see a knockout on Oranguru, but may have been one turn too late. This may be the last of Jimmy's uh, hope when it comes to energies and aggression. Yep, Torb's probably just going to play out this hand and use the Cynthia that he has, followed by two trades. If he's able to find Enhance Hammer, uh, we might not see Jimmy get any. Uh, big attacks off in this game. See, Tord is starting to feel that as he personally brings out that Wimpod into that active position. You know that Adrenaline's got to be rushing through him. He feels like he can potentially close the game out right now. Has four cards left, so any card he wants to see, he could see with uh, trades available. Of course, have to be a little more careful. He has double puzzle of time in his hand. Finds two additional cards. He knows exactly what's left in his deck, I believe. Yep. He could even just go and grab the other two cards and then uh, fill his deck with the rescue stretcher that he has. That enhance hammer is so important here. Potentially all four double colorless energies in Jimmy's discard pile already. Yep, wisely passing the turn here, not going to knock out the wind pod. Uh, just put that on Jimmy to find a way to retreat. Yeah, at this point, he's just trying to lock Jimmy out. Is that how many cards? Three, four? I uh, don't know. No, it's a little more. He's got maybe maybe five or six there. Yeah, it looks like there's like three cards left in the deck, potentially four now. I mean, we have no energy in play here for Jimmy. Of course he can't. He can't knock out anything on uh, towards field. Plays a grass energy onto the Glycopod, uh, which is threatening to potentially knock out any Pokemon in towards field if he gets a combination of cards, including double colorless energy, field blower, and uh, say choice band. So Countercatcher and Flare Grunt will be able to handle this. This was really the only way I saw Jimmy being able to come back in this game, uh, is if he's able to set up the double puzzle, crossing cut Guzma uh, choice band onto the Lele. Instead, Tord immediately is going to sniff that out, find his Oran Guru. And uh, I don't know if Jimmy has the resources anymore. He kind of just needed a few more turns to get this going. Indeed. Actually, uh, Tord has, I think Tord just 
barely is uh, okay against an N right now. He has six prize cards remaining, three in hand, one card in his deck. So this uh, resource so management four cards in deck. had to happen. Yeah. He was exactly one card away from actually just being decked out from an N. Yep. He is going to be at a seven card total between his deck and his hand now, though, which will put him safe from an N for now. He's well aware of this, goes and finds the rescue stretcher. So good eye on Tord to make sure that he doesn't lose to any shenanigans. Seems like there's like a three card deck here for Jimmy Pendarvis. This could be the final turn of the game. Clearly he's out of resources, or at least potentially out of resources. So close yet so far away. He's got two prizes left. Right? It's just a fingertip away. Just, just take them. <laughs> but, I mean, Tord just playing masterfully, taking away any type of opportunity here from Jimmy, but double puzzle of time. This is the last hurrah. Double, double colorless. The last hurrah, Kyle. Can he pull it off with this, uh, with this double puzzle of time? I was actually thinking of other ways that he could... Uh come back in this. If he actually had a bench space, he has Mew. He could copy resource management. Yeah, but he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he should find a bench space. <laughs> one Tell prize. Him. All right, down to one prize. No more resource management available to, to Tord. It's just too dangerous. Three, pri three cards left in his deck. Got access to trade uh, down to one card in his deck. Four <laughs> puzzle at times, though. Good old Tord. All right. All right, so if he uses double puzzle, finds Oren Guru. I suspect maybe like a rescue stretcher. Yeah, I think he actually needs uh, a high amount of cards to survive an end. I don't know if Jimmy has it available. One, two, three ends. Does Jimmy have four? Uh, looks like Jimmy has. Jimmy's got three. Rien? All right, so Jimmy is out of ends. So uh, I think that goes out the window as well. Yeah, all the puzzles are gone here for Jimmy, too. But not for Tord. <laughs> Tord never runs out. That's just the way this deck works. Just a masterpiece of a deck. It is terrifying, though, to play down the Orin Guru when you know that your opponent has just one prize card left. You want to make yeah. sure that you, when you do this, you do this perfectly. Yeah, I think that's a, a very dangerous play. I don't, know, I don't know how much he feels like he needs to do it. Well, if this is the last double colorless energy, he could feel pretty good about it. Um, the only real attacker left would be Golisopod, and I don't see a way it gets into the active spot. Of course, there is a time limit, so I'm sure the judges are letting Tord know about this. Two trades down. All right, so it looks like he's eyeing up Guzma and Oranguru. Oh, man. Rescue stretcher in hand for Tord. Double puzzle of time. Okay. Goes for the Oranguru uh, Guzma play. Does Jimmy have any resources available to him? He's got a wimp on. <laughs> All right, Jimmy's Wimpod, the active Pokemon now. Rescue Stretcher, of course, stretching in three Pokemon into the deck, shuffling them back in. He does not care which ones they are either. He's no, going to he take not. anything that, uh, that fills his deck and then a lot of puzzles. Of course, triple puzzle. All right. Jimmy, All right. if he has a way to retreat, uh, Floatstone would win the game. I just I think that Tor just counted it out and knows the, uh, the official counts here. The time is now. You're Jimmy, and you have access to, well, <laughs> Floatstone slash Grass Energy, for example. Or, no, just Floatstone. Jimmy's just looking through. If he is going to go into his deck, he has that opportunity. Could just trade away, go in, uh, deck himself, and find the cards if they're there. I think we already saw uh, a Floatstone, so the second Floatstone's not an option for him. That Wimpod has a huge retreat cost. If he had found, I mean, granted, uh, he could have very easily been an enhanced hammer, but if he had found double colorless and uh, 
safe lodestone from uh, the double puzzle at time, you would not be in this situation. But, I mean, then at that point, you just run the risk of just being enhanced hammer out of the game. Yeah. So Guzma is a way to get out of the active spot. Unfortunately, that means you don't get to knock out Orange Guru this turn. Probably going to have to target down one of the top of the Yeah, it's got to be a Lele. It actually, it, it's it's fine to go after the uh, the Zorak here. If if the if Tor decides to go uh, with Acerola to pick himself right. up, that means that he has less access to Zorak. Yeah, that's fair. Tor can also go aggressive with a Zorak if need be, but of course that's just not going to happen given this board state. Jimmy never wants his Wimpod to go active again, so he's uh, he's just going to clear off that opportunity. Limiting his own bench damage though. That's or true. limiting his own damage from his bench. But because of that choice ban, deals 110. He sees an opening. Toward. All right. One trade, two trades. Should find double puzzle here. Double puzzle. Does that run Jimmy out of all the resources he has available? If Toward decides to ace Arola and uh, enhanced hammer, I feel like there's just... Uh, no way for Jimmy to get out of this spot. Jimmy should be officially out of energies at this point. Maybe just a grass. But grass isn't going to do him too much here. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy's deck is so thin now. Of course, he's playing it out to the bitter end, but... You have to, yeah. Yeah. Double puzzle. Finding enhance hammer. And of course, Ace Rolla as well. Now, yeah, you might not even play the Zoro anymore because then you give your opponent a oh yeah I'm, another Guzma. I'm not, I'm not going there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Tord, he's got four cards left in deck, and it, it could be an infinite, an infinite amount of numbers now. Four he's cards in hand. Jimmy has double colorless energy left, actually. Yeah, he, he brought two back with his uh, puzzle at time. Gotcha. He still had one available. Yep. So, I mean, gonna, he hadn't limited his own bench space. He's just going to draw that last card. This could be the final turn of the game, and That's it is it. the final turn of the game. Jimmy Pendarvis scoops up his cards. Tord Recklev wins the match two games to nothing in just brutal fashion. It was just such a long, drawn-out match where... Ford had to masterfully play his way around so much aggression from Jimmy and